Thank you Dyson for sponsoring today's video. Throughout the years, I've bought a lot of IKEA furniture. A lot of stuff has been used to make our makeover videos. I've planned an allocated budget to different types of setups in the condo, the office, at friends. IKEA furniture for us has been very durable and very easy to use to make a home or space look wonderful. Look, as an engineering student, I've built a lot of stuff throughout my degree, including an automated vodka machine from scratch. Anyways, my point is I've bought many IKEA things to DIY, I've bought many IKEA things to decorate a space and I've bought many IKEA things throughout the years. So I sort of know what's good and what's not, starting with um, their pack boards. IKEA pack boards are absolutely great. You can use them in a multitude of ways and we have. Primarily these come in so handy for office spaces, but I've thought about using one in the kitchen although I've never pulled the trigger on it. Look, my pack boards allow for me and my girl to keep things at hand. Heck, it allows for us at the studio to keep daily tools within arm's reach. But the cool thing about them is that they are very customizable to the point that you can actually spray paint them if you want, which we have. I think the absolute best pegboard setup I've ever done till now is the one at home. Double side to side pegboards with some hooks on top to mount a portable light bar. You can use these hooks for so many things like mounting keyboards, stacking a bunch of cables if you want, although I don't like stacking cables on this particular wall. So what I ended up doing is that I bought these smaller hooks to be able to hang some of my most used cables, but all together with the containers which you can label, the different types of baskets you can hang, and the different types of tools that you can mount in here, it makes these absolutely useful. Plus, not to forget, they are an absolute joke to install and they won't damage your wall because of the proper stoppers these have. I think all in all, not only do pegboards serve as excellent aids for productivity, but they also sometimes tend to decorate walls. And this isn't me suggesting you get a bunch of pegboards to decorate walls. In fact, if you really want to decorate your walls, IKEA shelves and IKEA frames are excellent for that. For the love of God, just save some money on those type of things, unless you really like GrooveMate's shelves, which I understand, but when it comes to frames, I'm going to give you guys a simple trick. DIY these with Pinterest. For the past three setup makeovers, we've found ways to create really cool prints with IKEA frames. What John and I do is we usually search on Pinterest for really cool prints and posters. We import these within Photoshop and modify the dimensions of the file according to our frame size. We then get these printed at a print shop for like $50 a pop. But be careful because depending on the resolution of the image, it could pixelate your print. So you've got to be really careful with how big you go with some of these. Other than that, they are really like super easy to install. Adding some scotch tape if you are planning to use the white borders is a must. I think the other thing to note is that you should absolutely avoid adding fingerprints to the frames, plastic covers, so try to wear some gloves while doing this if you can. Oh, and um, avoid hanging these the way we have. Look, we just drilled and aligned a couple of screws to the wall and uh, hanged most of these within the actual frame. But the issue is that with time, the frames will start to bend. So do not do this. Anyways, overall, you can use these anywhere you'd like and they'll add to your space. The same thing goes with their shelves. We've gotten all sorts of cool shelves at IKEA to decorate our spaces to the point that I've used some to hang my girls' purses. In the office, I got a few lac shelves and some DIY shelves with some IKEA lights. My favorite shelf up to now is the IKEA stacked lacked vertical shelf. I actually love that one. My only tip with these is to always get proper drywall screw anchors so they hold up properly. These can be annoying to redrill and create even more dirt. So make sure you get decent ones that can hold proper weight off the bat. If all the drilling you've been doing has been making a mess, you can always consider getting a vacuum for that, but maybe something automated so you don't have to worry about it. Actually, I just brought home Dyson's 360 VNAV robot vacuum. I was mapping the house about a couple of weeks ago with the help of my Dyson app and it does it really well to the point that 
even though my cat was on the way with its 360 degree vision system it was able to recognize that i installed this within my main hallway i do live in a single floor unit although it comes with two docks in case you want to dock it on a second floor if that's your case for us this is pretty much a complete vacuum something that has been giving us some peace of mind the other day i was replying to a comment about how condos do get dusty quite a lot and so the fact that we can just automatically schedule this is great with a dyson hyperdenia motor spinning at up to 110,000 rpm to deliver two times the suction of any other robot vacuum strong suction forces to properly clean floors sensors that ensure obstacle cleaning a piezo sensor that can detect and react to changes in dust levels and a fully sealed HEPA filtration system to trap dust and seal particles, this might just be one of those appliances at home that could win tech of the year. Honestly, I think it's a complete robot vacuum with proper edge cleaning technology with the help of a site actuator and a triple action brush bar with different nylon surfaces to dig into carpets and hard floors. I'll leave a link to it down below with all of the other IKEA furniture I've been talking about, including our coffee setup because I think you are going to love this one. One of my most favorite collections of all time from IKEA is the Fialbo collection. I mean, I've got their tiny little desk under my pegboard at the office, their shelf unit for our gaming desk setup, and I've even thought about getting their media unit for our TV setup. But the one that attracts me the most here is their shelf unit with the bottom two drawers. I don't know, I just love the rustic look this brings to a home and I love the industrial feel with the black dark metal and the color of the wood. These are actually super solid units and to be honest, the wood color hides dust pretty well so I do love that. This setup here was mainly inspired by Becky and Chris. It's actually a setup that mainly contains things from Ikea the cutting board, these containers, the lamp, the box within the under storage which keeps coffee beans and snacks. Look, these are solid units and this particular design makes such a solid unit for a mini bistro. Plus, even though the rails are kind of skinny, it still makes it easier to hide cables and have a clean cable management for it, so don't worry about that. When it comes to tips and tricks for the bedroom and living room, I'm not the biggest fan of their media units or bed frames. However, I do like the types of accessories you can bring in to really decorate these spaces. Within my living room, I got a few things from Ikea that I've been really enjoying. I've got the Vilto towel stand, the Rod Bloda wall clock, and the Lauder's lamp. Of course, for us, the towel stand is mostly used to hang covers covers you can use for a sofa. I also started keeping a few of my cat toys within this pouch that came with it and sometimes I hang bags within the handles if needed. The clock I mean it's just a clock but I like the design. They actually have some really nice clocks you might want to take a look at. The same thing goes for their lamps. I think IKEA have the best value lamps you can find at the moment. I mean TikTok is like filled with them but my favorite one right now is the Lauders. It's such a nice minimal lamp that sits behind my couch. It's compatible with my hue bulb and I think the color of the wood is fantastic. The only thing is that it's not pet friendly. It's a lamp that is fragile and indeed my cat broke the adjustment clips so uh, be careful. When it comes to the bedroom aside from the wall decorations and shelves I've used from Ikea, I actually love their Sonos lamps. Both of these are indeed paired together and do in fact work with hue bulbs. The only thing I wish they did have was the ability to offer Google Assistant and the ability to pair with a soundbar as a backdrop speaker. I say this because I would have loved to install a Sonos soundbar below my TV and have like a minimal surround sound system here, like an all-in-one. However, these do pair together with all my other Sonos devices and work like a charm, so I guess it's not too bad. When it comes to IKEA desks, let me tell you something, I think I'm a pro at this. In fact, we've built full DIY desks from IKEA that have turned out really nice. My favorite project up to now has been our friends gaming desk setup. 
we actually took his IKEA's raising desk and paired that with a kitchen countertop he cut by himself. And what we did is that we fully customized it to adhere to RGB light strips to make it all look nice. So yeah, I mean kitchen countertops from IKEA can be used as tabletops and I really encourage you guys to do so. They are incredibly durable, incredibly easy to pair with any sort of legs and they just offer plenty of room on a desk. I think the most recurrent duo of all times is the countertops with the Alex drawers. I mean, you really can't go wrong with that. In my opinion, it's the best setup you can get from IKEA and they just work. I do want to point out that these countertops are super easy to cut and drill through if you ever need to. We've done it multiple times so you really can get creative with all of these. As long as you measure and plan your table accordingly, anything is possible and most things can fit. Look, sometimes minimalism comes at a cost. I'm sure LG knew that when they were engineering the Cine Beam Q. I can only imagine what the internals of this super small body projector looks like. I mean, to have this thing weigh 1.49 kilograms within a simple and modern design that can also be used as a stylish art object must be hard. Considering this has a 360 degree rotation handle, this is something I can easily bring to the office and I use its handle to adjust the angle of projection when I need to. This is a projector that projects up to a 120 inch image at full 4K resolution, delivering vivid and sharp colors with a 154% coverage of the CIP3 gamut with clear details and rich blacks and a dynamic contrast ratio of 450,000 to one. The auto screen adjustment technology LG has for this is what allows you to auto calibrate the screen alignment and focus. Like it literally takes a few seconds to reproject a clean cut rectangular screen. It's got an easy access to OTT streaming services with its built-in OS. It can mirror content with the help of screen share and AirPlay 2 and it comes with its own little remote which to be fair reminds me a lot of my own LG G2 remote. I mean it's such a simple and minimal device I almost wish I could package my whole setup the way LG has done for this. The very last IKEA item we've had for a while is our kitchen island. This here is their Vatholma kitchen island, their best seller. Ours has been used and abused throughout the years but the thing is that it comes with a 10 year limited warranty so that's a peace of mind. A lot of people don't know this but the overhead set comes in separately so that's an addition you need to buy separately from the island. For us in terms of functionality this might be the best thing we've bought from IKEA. It's the piece of furniture we've crafted to practically shoot and use as storage. I did add some felt underneath the legs to make it a lot easier to slide. As you can see I might need to reinstall them but that's a little trick you can use. The storage this offers is plenty and the top part did come with some hooks so you can hang stuff off of it. I mainly use it to store boxes and to prompt up a light bar to shoot on the table but if you want to hang stuff, you can. I do love the wood this has, again it's been so durable for us but I do like to cover it with a giant groove made felt pad and this table mat I got from Ikea to add some texture. It really is like the best thing we've got here. It's used all the freaking time and it's a bestseller for a reason. When it comes to things that maybe don't sell as well, I think there are a few things that you should avoid from IKEA or at least be careful with. I'll talk from experience but I think their couches suck. They tend to be really hard and just not comfortable at all. Sometimes you think with time they will break in but uh, they really don't. Trust me, I've had this one here for a while and I slept on an IKEA couch at my parents for a full year and it never got better. They are kind of hard and just not comfortable. I'll say the same thing about their chairs. With the few chairs we've gotten from IKEA, honestly just avoid them if you can. Most of them suck and for something that's so important within your everyday life, I always recommend to spend proper money on a chair. As for the rest, I think their bathroom accessories do need a bit of work. The towel hangers for example maybe need to be redesigned. The towels at home fall easily but I do like the wall mounted towel hanger although the only thing is that the materials suck and it's like chipping away. Their lighting strips kind of suck as well. The ones under my shelves last for about like a few hours not even and the color with the luminosity they output is uh, really not the cleanest. The last item would be the Besta collection. 
I feel like they used to be so much better but with time they've gotten worse. They're kind of flimsy and can wobble at times. The mechanism to align the doors is also hell on earth to work with and the automatic door shutters work but they really aren't the best. They sometimes don't close properly or flush with the door. I think the best of collection has been going downhill. All in all, from experience, as someone that shops at IKEA all the time, I think they have some amazing products. You can really furnish an entire house with IKEA products and make it look very expensive. Look, I'd love to hear from you guys. What's your experience with IKEA furniture been like? Do you guys have any DIY tips and tricks to share? I'm actually all ears because I'm looking for some ideas to implement for our future makeovers. Anyways, hope you've liked this type of episode. Next week, we've got a full tech vlog coming. So I'll catch you guys then. Take care and uh, talk soon.